Subcurricular stitches present a superior alternative to traditional suturing methods as they prevent any visible stitch marks on the skin. However, mastering the technique requires more skill as compared to conventional closure methods. It's advisable to employ subcuticular stitches in cases without tension or after addressing the tension by initially placing deeper subcutaneous stitches as we have done over here. Optimal materials for this technique include smooth, absorbable monofilament sutures. To perform subcutular stitches, I utilize a polyglycapron 25 suture coated with triclosan, specifically monocryl plus, in a 3O size on a reverse cutting needle. Usually, this suture is undyed, but I am using a dyed variant over here for ease of visualization. The closure begins at the far end of the incision with small bites parallel to the skin surface. The bite on the opposite side is usually taken in a reverse fashion. The suture is tied as usual with a surgeon's knot with an other half hitch on top for additional safety. The short end of this is then cut flush and as you can see the knot gets buried down into the incision. Using forceps retract the skin edge to take another bite in the subcuticular plane. Proper needle placement within the dermis should provide some resistance. If the needle passes through deep through tissues within the subcutaneous plane, no resistance will be felt. Take this as a cue to reposition your bite. The point of entry on the opposite side should be directly opposite the earlier point of exit. This helps achieve a snug closure. Symmetrical small bites ensure neat apposition of the skin edges, resulting in an invisible suture and a cosmetically pleasing outcome. A zigzag pattern may indicate larger asymmetrical bites taken too far along the incision, leading to gaps upon tightening. The closure progresses continuously and without locking to the other end of the incision. When you spread the skin apart, you should not be seeing any major gaps. A ladder-like pattern should be visible upon spreading the edges, indicating well-aligned wound edges. This ensures that when tightened, the wound edges come together well. Ending the closure can be accomplished in a few ways. One method involves performing an Aberdeen or a surgeon's knot, which is then buried into the incision. The knot is buried into the incision by passing the needle through the end and emerging some distance away. Alternatively, knots can be omitted altogether. Upon reaching the end of the incision, pass the needle through the corner in the intradermal plane and emerge a short distance away. Applying upward traction of the suture, reverse the needle through the same hole in the skin. If needed, this can be done once again in the opposite direction. Applying upward traction makes the aperture in the skin far more visible. And the entry of the needle through the same aperture ensures that no part of the suture is visible when you have pulled it across. 
the change in direction along with the friction of the dermis creates a knot-like effect. This process can be repeated one to two times further. Finally, the suture is cut flush with the skin at its final point of exit.